Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss how to determine the order of a reaction from initial rates. Now in the topic of kinetics, we actually need to know the technique of determining the order of a reaction with respect to a particular reactant or catalyst from the initial rates. So this is fairly common because in syllabus, there are only two ways for me to determine the order of the reaction, which will be either the graphical method Basically, we plot a graph, then from the shape of the graph and the half-life, we can determine whether this is order 0, order 1, or order 2. The other method, of course, will be the initial rate method, where we are given the initial rates of a few experiments, where we vary the concentration of some of the reactants. Then from there, we want to determine the order of the reaction with respect to each reactant. So let us have an example to illustrate how to determine the order of the reaction using the initial rate method. Alright, so we have this example here involving this reaction between sucrose and water to give me glucose and fructose. Now given these three different experiments where we vary the concentration of HCl, which will be the catalyst in this case, and I vary the concentration of sucrose. So if I have experiment 1 where the concentration of HCl this is 0.1, sucrose concentration it is also 0.1, the initial rate of the reaction will be given here 0.024, more per dm cube per second. Now for the second experiment, what we are doing is the concentration of HCl will still be 0.1 mole per dm cube. I change the concentration of sucrose to 0.15 mole per dm cube. Initial rate now changes to 0.036 mole per dm cube per second. So we have another experiment, experiment 3, where now the concentration of HCl becomes 0.2 mole per dm cube. Sucrose concentration it is 0.1 mole per dm cube. Initial rate of the reaction, it is now 0.048 mole per dm cube per second. So you notice what we have is we vary the concentration of HCl, we vary the concentration of sucrose, and of course the rate is expected to change if the rate of the reaction is affected by the catalyst or the reactant. Now what we would need to do is we would need to choose a pair of experiments where only one of the concentration of one of the species changes and ideally the other species, the concentration remains constant. So therefore any change in the rate of the reaction must be because of the species that you are changing in terms of concentration, right? So in general, what we will want to do is we want to compare when I vary the concentration of a particular reactant by a certain amount, what is the expected change in the rate of the reaction? Then from there we can deduce whether this is zero order or this is first order or second order. Now let us first consider determining the order of reaction with respect to HCl, which is the catalyst in this case. So if I consider the experiments that we will want to use, of course if I want to determine how the concentration of HCl affects the rate of the reaction, then I will need to choose an experiment where the concentration of HCl changes. Ideally, sucrose concentration remains the same. So of course there's no way I can choose experiments 1 and 2, right? Because if I choose 1 and 2, you notice HCl concentration remains the same. So therefore I cannot determine the order of the reaction with respect to HCl. So therefore what we will have to do is we will have to choose either experiment 1 where the concentration of HCl, this is 0.1 mole per dm cube, and experiment 3 where the concentration of HCl doubles to 0.2 mole per dm cube, or between experiment 2 and experiment 3. So it is either 1, 3 or 2, 3. But what we want to choose will be the pair of experiments where the concentration of sucrose remains unchanged. If I consider experiments 1 and 3, you notice HCl concentration varies, sucrose concentration remains the same. 0.1 mole per dm cube, 0.1 mole per dm cube. So therefore later any change in the rate of the reaction, it is obviously because of HCl. So that is a direct comparison. It is a lot easier for us to compare. Now if I compare experiments 2 and 3, the concentration of HCl changes from 0.1 to 0.2. Sucrose concentration also changed from 0.15 to 0.10. So what this means is the change in the rate of the reaction now is affected by two things, HCl as well as sucrose. Actually, it can be done, but it is mathematically more tedious. And of course, it is wiser for us to conduct an experiment such that I will only vary the concentration of HCl, but I keep the concentration of sucrose constant. So therefore, any change in the rate of the reaction, we know is because of HCl, because I only change this variable. Everything else, it is being constant. So when we conduct experiment, 
it is very intuitive and very scientifically reasonable for us to vary one term, everything else, we keep them constant. So in this case, what we should be choosing in terms of the pair of experiments to do comparison will be, we will choose experiments one and experiment three because I notice that the HCl concentration actually doubles and you notice the sucrose concentration remains from 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. So as mentioned, any difference or any change in the rate of the reaction, in this case, the rate changes from 0 0.024 to 0 0.048. So therefore, any change in the rate of the reaction must be because of HCl, nothing to do with sucrose. So what we will do is we can use the inspection method, which is one of the methods for us to determine the order of the reaction. Because this is a very straightforward comparison, you notice if I compare experiments 1 and 3, so which we have stated here, I know that the concentration of HCl doubles and the initial rate, we can calculate no problem, 0 0.048 divided by 0 0.024. So the initial rate also increased by two times. So if HCl concentration increased by two times and the rate increased by two times, we notice that this is a proportional increase in the rate of the reaction. So therefore it must be first order with respect to HCl. Now just to do a comparison, because in syllabus, we are only interested in three orders, right? Order zero, order one, order two. If it is first order, I double the concentration of HCl, I will double the rate, which is shown here. Now what if it is zero order? If it is zero order with respect to HCl, when I double the concentration of HCl, the rate of the reaction is not expected to be affected. So therefore, the rate will increase by two to the power of zero times or change by one time. Change by one time effectively means that there's no change in the rate of the reaction. So for instance, in this case, if it is zero order with respect to HCl, then the initial rate for experiment one is expected to be 0 0.024. Then when I double the concentration of HCl to 0 0.2, the rate of the reaction should remain as 0 0.024. That means when I change the HCl concentration, the rate of the reaction remains unchanged. So that is the meaning of zero order reaction with respect to HCl. So if the rate of the reaction is second order with respect to HCl, then the expected change will be where I double the concentration of HCl, the rate of the reaction is expected to increase by two square times, which is increasing by four times. So this means that we only have three possibilities, order zero, where any change in the concentration will not result in any change in the rate of the reaction. First order reaction, where the change in the concentration will result in a proportional change in the rate of the reaction and second order reaction where a change in the concentration will result in an increase in the rate of the reaction by a factor of a square times. So we only have these three possibilities. So in principle, it is quite easy for us to figure out whether this is order zero, order one or order two. All right, next, how do I determine the order of the reaction with respect to sucrose? In this case. Now for sucrose, what we will have to do is, of course, we will have to choose a pair of experiments where the concentration of sucrose will change and hopefully HCl concentration will remain the same. So if I consider the three experiments, the most obvious one that we should be choosing should be between experiments one and two, where the sucrose concentration changes from 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 mol per dm cube. So actually this guy increased by 1.5 times and what I notice is the HCl concentration actually remains as 0 0.1 mol per dm cube. So any change in the rate of the reaction must be because of sucrose, nothing to do with HCl because HCl concentration remains the same. So now what I need to determine is when the concentration of sucrose increased by 1.5 times, then what will happen to the change in the initial rate of this reaction? So comparing experiments one and two, we notice sucrose concentration increased by 1.5 times. Initial rate increases by 0 0.036 over 0 0.024 times. So this will be also 1.5 times. So what this means is when sucrose concentration increased by 1.5 times, rate also increased proportionally by 1.5 times. So it will also be first order with respect to sucrose. So very easily we can determine the order of the reaction with respect to HCl, which is order one, and with respect to sucrose, which is also order one. So what we can do now is we can write out the overall rate equation. So rate will be equal to rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of HCl power one, because this is first order with respect to HCl and the concentration of sucrose 
power one because again it is first order with respect to sucrose. Alright, so that was the discussion involving using the initial rate method to determine the order of the reaction for kinetics question. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.